In this video, we're going to use our current system. So we have our uh, little window and monster selector. We're going to use this to select all the monsters in our scene of a certain type, which means we're going to put a button in. When we click the button, it'll use our selection filter here, like our type that we're looking for. It'll find all the monsters and it'll, it'll look at this and compare and it'll say, does this data on this monster, is this a type of undead? If it is, then select it or add to the selection. If not, it won't, it'll skip over it. And so that's what we'll do. We'll start to create a very simple little select tool and select all of a certain type in the scene. We could have tons of monsters in here and maybe maybe it would be useful for us. Okay, so we have our little drop down for making our selection. Now we need a button that actually selects the monsters based on our drop down. We're going to come in here and let's actually draw a button. So first we'll make a little bit of space for ourselves. Can we layout dot space? Yeah, maybe a little bit. And then in order to even see this, let's draw a button. Now remember with a button, it will return a Boolean value whether or not it was pressed. So we're gonna draw it, but we're gonna draw it inside of a uh, condition, like a check with an if statement. And we'll say if GUI layout dot button. And then we need to label the button, right? So our button is going to be called select all. And we can assume that if we selected a type of monster and we put select all, that it's reasonable for the user to understand what's going on. Uh, now we need to actually determine what happens when we press that button, right? First, let's save it and look back at what's happening. You can see when I just add a button, it uses the whole line, which is fine for now. You know, maybe I kind of like that. Uh, we could always change it later if we want. Uh, we could put humanoid select all, drag in select all. Nothing's happening now because we don't really have any code here. I always like to break out buttons into separate methods. So like, uh, what do we want to do here? We want to select all monsters. Okay, we'll come and make that method, right? We could have done it the refactor way, but private, select all monsters, okay. Come down here. So now we need the code for select all, selecting all monsters. Now, conceptually, what we want to do is we want to, when we press the button, look through the whole scene, find all the monsters, and then check each monster to see if its type matches the type that we're looking for. So that's what we want to do. So we'll take this a step at a time. First, uh, we'll put some code for ourselves or some pseudo code just to keep ourselves on track. Collect all the monsters in our scene. Once we do that, we're going to create a temporary list to store valid monsters as we check. Because when we find one, we're like, yes, this one is good, store it. So we can come back later to it and um, pass the valid monsters back at the very end. So then once we create that temporary list, we need to check each monster, store if type matches. And then finally, we need to create a selection from valid monsters. So there's a couple steps to this, right? We'll take this one at a time. Now, you probably already know some of these, these methods. We're just using them in an editor script, so it's a little bit different. But if we want to find all our monsters, we're going to create an array of monsters. Right, we're looking specifically for the game objects in our scene. Ooh, it's not going to compile because we're not done with our code. It's going to look at all the game objects in our scene that have a monster component on them. Specifically, we're looking for this component. You could look for lights or something if you want a different version of this tool. Uh, we're looking for the monster component, and we're going to store this into an array. To do the search, it's find objects of type. And the type is monster. Okay. Now we need to create a temporary list uh, that we can hold on to valid monsters with. Now, because in the end, I really only need to select the game objects, right? Like I'm not selecting the data or whatever. At the very end, I want to use these monsters and select the game objects associated with these monsters. Maybe I want to disable them. Maybe I want to like rename them, whatever. My end result is going to be a list of game objects that are the valid monsters. So in this case, I'm gonna make my list a game object. Now you could probably make this a list of monsters and get, get the game object from that. You know, you could do it that way. Uh, for now, I just know that I need the game objects at the end, so I'm going to store it as that. We'll call this um, final selection and we'll initialize it here. Uh, 
Okay, and now we need to loop through and we need to check each monster and then compare the types and store it inside of our final selection if our type matches, like if it's a valid monster based on our uh, filter. So we're gonna do this really simply with a uh, uh, with a for each. I'm pressing tab twice to uh, complete that really quickly. Uh, and I'm just gonna be specific here for each monster, monster in monsters. It sounds uh, weird to say. For each monster in our monster array, we have access to this current monster as we loop through. And uh, for this current monster that we're checking, for each one that we check, we're going to look inside of the monster script, right? Check the data, and instead of that data, check the type. So if monster dot data dot uh, monster type is equal to right two equals for comparison our currently selected filter, selected monster type. Okay, if these match, right? Like if, if our current selected filter is undead and we look at the monster and its monster type is undead, then store it inside of our final selection. So we're just gonna say final selection dot add our current monster that we're checking, right? This one right here, current monster that we're checking. And we're just gonna store the game object, right? We only care about selecting the game objects in the end. So yeah, check each monster. If the type matches, then add the current monster that we're checking to our final selection. And then once we loop through all those, all we have left to do is create a selection based off of our final selection list. So to do that, it's just, um, if you look in the selection API, you have some other things you can do. You can select one object, you can select multiple, uh, you can do a lot of other things, so you can check that out if you want more options here. But what I want is the selection.objects that are selected. I'm gonna reassign it to be our final selection here. And you'll see it's gonna give me an error here because we're trying to put a list into an array, like this is actually an object array right there. Uh, so I'm just going to convert my list to array, just like that, really simple. Okay, and I, th I think that'll do it, right? When we press our button, use our current selected monster type from our enum dropdown, find all of the monster, the game objects in the scene that have a monster script on them, create an empty list that we can use to store ones that are valid, check each of the monsters that we find in our scene, uh, look through each one, compare its monster type and its data, and if it matches what we're looking for, then add it to this little list that we created, and finally, we make a selection and put whatever we have stored in our list, our, our game objects, uh, and make a selection based off of that. Okay, save. Come back in here. Now we test. Uh, undead, select all. Cool, look at that. It selected all of our monsters that are of type undead. Let's try this. Uh, dragon, select all. It selects all the dragons, but we only have one. Uh, what about none? Doesn't select anything, right? No selection. Humanoid, no selection. And the neat thing about setting it up this way is if we ever added another monster type, it's pulling directly from our monster type, right? We're not defining each monster type in our script here. Uh, we're doing this from the base type so that if we added more monster types, our window would automatically work, right? Like we add a, uh, I don't know, spirit type, and then this will pop up here. We can select it and it will just compare if we have any spirit types. It's a pretty cool little tool here. You could use this to select all of certain types of things in your scene. Uh, you know, you could always do that from searches and whatnot, but just to get things started. And then, you know, maybe we'll add one, another feature to this just to keep looking at window scripting. But I mean, I hope, I hope this gets you started and seeing how you can, you can use this stuff.